Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the hormone leptin and how it's related to weight loss. Uh, so leptin is a hormone that is secreted by adipose tissue, meaning fat tissue. Uh, so it is a hormone that goes into our circulation and it acts on the hypothalamus, which is the part of the brain that regulates things like hunger, body temperature, and all sorts of other survival related functions. So it's a hormone that your fat tissue produces, and it acts on the hypothalamus, the part of the brain, to inhibit hunger, meaning that it makes you less hungry, which leads you to eat less food. Um, so it regulates overall hunger levels over a span a spans of time, um, rather than our food intake that occurs in just one meal. So it's not that our leptin is fluctuating meal by meal and it makes you hungry, not hungry, hungry, not hungry. Um, it's really a long-term secretion based on how much fat tissue you have in your body. So essentially, the more fat tissue you have in your body, the more leptin you secrete over the long term. And the idea is that when you have more fat tissue, it is suppressing your hunger uh, so that you don't eat as much because you have more fat stores to draw from. So when it comes to losing weight, what happens is, again, the more fat you have in your body, the more leptin you secrete. Um, so as you're losing weight and your total quantity of fat tissue or adipose tissue is decreasing, that means that the amount of leptin you're secreting is also decreasing. So the hypothalamus, let's say you have more fat tissue to start with and you're getting X amount of leptin, your hypothalamus is used to that amount of leptin and that amount of fat tissue. Now, as you're losing weight, you have less fat, you're getting less leptin up to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is thinking, oh boy, we don't have as much fat anymore and there isn't leptin to suppress hunger. So you start to get more and more hungry and the brain can actually interpret that as being in a state of starvation. Um, so what happens is as we're losing weight, even though uh, the energy demands of the body haven't changed, in fact, they might even become less because you have a smaller body mass, uh, but the energy demands aren't necessarily changing. So you're not working out more or anything like that, that would mean you need to eat more food. Um, but because the hypothalamus is interpreting the lower level of leptin as starvation, it can lead to intense hunger and cravings, um, which then gets in the way of your weight loss efforts if you're still trying to lose weight or you're trying to maintain your new weight. Um, so the trick is working through that increased hunger and cravings, realizing that just because you're hungrier doesn't necessarily mean that your body requires more food. It just means that your hypothalamus hasn't yet adjusted to your new level of leptin in reflection of your new amount of body fat. Um, so it means that it might be getting harder as you're losing weight. It's harder to resist the hunger and the cravings that are increasing in that case. Um, but you need to resist. And um, with discipline, you need to keep your uh, total volume of food in check and make sure that you're still eating healthy foods. And then your weight loss efforts will continue. And over time, your hypothalamus will adjust. So you're not just going to be hungry and having cravings forever. It's really just while you're in the process of losing weight before your hypothalamus has adjusted to your new level of leptin. Um, the other, the flip side here is when we have what's called leptin resistance. So this would be in somebody who has a large amount of body fat, which means that they are producing a large amount of leptin. So you would think that large amount of leptin means hunger suppression, you're not hungry at all. But actually what happens is if we're secreting a lot of leptin over a long period of time, the cells that receive the signal from leptin become more and more resistant to that signal. So the more leptin you have in circulation over a long period of time, the more your body ignores it. Um, and that's leptin resistance. And so in that case, even though you have a large amount of leptin in circulation, it's not doing the job of suppressing hunger. So you would become more and more hungry and have cravings, which would lead to further weight gain, 
which would lead to higher levels of leptin and worsens this cycle of leptin resistance. Um, so it would result in a constant feeling of hunger. Um, and so again, just like in the last example during weight loss, it's a matter of not giving into that hunger and craving, uh, which I know is definitely easier said than done, but it is a matter of figuring out how many calories you actually need in the day, choosing healthy foods instead of giving into cravings and sticking with it. So even if you're feeling hungry, um, we can't always trust that our feelings of hunger mean that we require more food. Um, if we're eating a sufficient number of calories and we're eating good, healthy foods, then there comes a point where we have to trust that we're having enough and ignore the additional feelings of hunger. Because uh, the only way to get out of this leptin resistance is to lose body fat so that we secrete less leptin. And the less leptin we're secreting, the more sensitive the hypothalamus will become um, in response to that leptin secretion. So once we lose more weight and we secrete less leptin, then the leptin starts to have a greater effect. And so eventually when you get out of the cycle of leptin resistance, um, now leptin is doing its job and it does suppress hunger. So you aren't just going to be hungry forever. You will get out of that cycle and get back into a normal uh, cycle of hunger and hunger suppression with leptin. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.